welcome back to my channel. Some of you might be new and you may not know, but I actually did the Disney College program and they just came out with their apps this week for the fall 2018 program. So I did mine three years ago back in fall of 2015 and I loved it. I had so much fun and I always get tons of questions even though I did a video about what it was like. I get tons of questions about the whole application process and the interviews. So today I am doing a video about the whole interview process, how you can best prepare for it, and some of the questions they may or may not ask you during your interview. So I hope you guys are excited and let's just jump right into it. So I think it also might be good to mention that the last time I did this was three years ago, so my memory is not the greatest when it comes to remembering the exact interview questions, but I do know after working with the company, what are some things you can do to help prepare, some things you can easily find on the internet, but maybe you just don't even know where to start or what to look for. So the first tip is to kind of prepare yourself and prepare your knowledge of the company and its values. Think about which park you would like to work at, either Disney World or Disneyland. Those are the two options of where you can work on the college program or where you can live. And think about like pros and cons, like the Florida one has a lot more options for cast members, like they have a ton more roles for people in the college program. The Disneyland one definitely does not have as many. It's like maybe half or a third of the roles offered compared to Disney World. So that's something good to know. Something else good to know about Disney is the four keys, if you will. This is something you could easily Google. Basically, those are the four key values of the company. They are safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. And by the time that you're done working there, you will have those memorized and ingrained in your soul. But basically, those are actually in order to of hierarchy. By knowing those four keys and knowing what Disney values the most, you can kind of incorporate that into your interview, into some of your responses to some of the questions. That was something I definitely wish I knew beforehand and had done a little bit more research on. I kind of went into the interview like, oh, I'm a pro. I love Disney movies, therefore I will do great at the interview. But I think it would have been really beneficial for me to know what the four values were, just so I could kind of keep that in mind when answering some of those interview questions. My next tip is to think about those preferences that you listed in terms of job roles and think about reasons why you would be good or maybe not so good at a fit for them. So obviously you don't really want to say like, oh, I don't really want to do that. You want to seem open-minded to everything, but how do you seem open-minded while still showcasing that you want to do a specific role? What I did was I thought about the roles that I wanted or I liked beforehand. They were the character performer role, character attendant, photo pass, and bippity bobbity boutique. Those were like my top, top ones when I was doing the application. I listed those as like very highly interested and everything else I put down a little bit lower just because I really wanted them to know that those were the ones I was interested in. What I did beforehand was I thought about different examples I could pull from, from either my past work experience or even my past like hobbies too. Like for example, photo pass. I love photography so I had no problem talking about that. I could talk about how I took photography classes and AP classes in high school and I also took photography classes in college. But for those roles that I felt like I wasn't the best fit for, I obviously wasn't going to say like, oh I wouldn't be interested in that. I would just kind of make it seem more like I had no experience in those roles and I might not be a good fit. So when you're interviewing, what you want to do is you want to prove to the company, and this is just any interviewing in general, you want to prove to whoever you're talking to that you are the best fit for the job that they are offering and that you will enhance their company so much and they are missing out by not having you as a part of their team. That was something I remember I mentioned a lot was I kept talking about like, oh, I'd be a strong fit for this role. So what I did was I kept pushing those other roles and showing like why I would be so good at those other roles so that when they, they asked about the, the roles I didn't care about as much, it wasn't like I was saying, oh, I don't want to be in those roles. It was more like, oh, you know, I just don't feel like I'm as great of a fit. I don't really have any experience. So that's a way that you can phrase it positively so you're not coming across as being closed-minded while still really showing them what you are interested in. Another question I get asked, and I feel like this is, goes for any sort of phone interview in general, is how can I present myself over the phone like I could in person. Like, you know, in person, like right now, like I'm being very engaging. I'm smiling a lot. I, you could be making eye contact. There's a lot of things that you do in visual cues that you have in a actual like face-to-face -face interview that you don't have in a phone interview. So you're just like, how do I show my personality 
over the phone. So one thing that's really good to do if even if you're doing an over the phone interview is dress like you are going to an interview. That's what I did. I actually dressed in my makeup all night and dressed like I was at an actual interview. I feel like presentation is huge and if you're in your sweats and your comfy sweatshirt, which I love wearing all the time, but if I'm doing a phone interview and I'm dressed like that, I feel like I might accidentally subconsciously slip into the mindset and become a little bit more casual. And I want to show them that I'm serious about this job. I'm really passionate about it. So even though they cannot see you, I feel like just dressing nicer or dressing like you would for a face-to-face -face interview would really help you kind of just get into the right mindset and help center your thoughts. And that way you're not going to get as casual over the phone as you would if you were wearing just like comfy clothes. If you guys have questions as to how to sound upbeat over the phone, um, this is something I had to practice a lot and I do on camera, I, I swear. I'm actually not this energetic in person. Most of the time I'm pretty subdued. But um, to be more engaging, one thing you can do is widen your range when it comes to your pitch and your tone. So there'll be times where I get really excited and I talk a little bit higher and then I can bring it down too. So when you're talking to someone over the phone, try to not be monotone sometimes monotone comes across as being bored even if you're not if you're just the same pitch the whole time it can come across as you're just dis I can't even do it you're just disinterested and even if this sounds calm if you're trying to show to someone how passionate you are and you're speaking at the same level it might come across as you're being bored Whereas if you <laughs> use your voice and you use different pitches at different times, um, I feel like I could be a little more engaging. So you could try that. If that's just not you, again, just be who you are if that's really not you and you're a more calm person. But for those of you who are curious about sounding more engaged over the phone, um, that's something that I do is I try to play up with my pitches a little bit when I'm talking. I feel like that overall is more engaging and that might show that you're a little bit more enthusiastic about the role. Another really great question that I got asked was, what are some good follow-up questions? So typically, if you guys have never interviewed before, typically at the very end of an interview, they'll ask you, like, okay, well, that's all the questions I have, but do you have any additional questions for us? Generally, there's no right or wrong answers. However, for this question, there is a wrong answer, and the wrong answer is saying, like, no, I think I'm good. I pretty much got that covered. For whatever reason, like not, I don't even know what it is, but whenever I've gone to like networking events for different, like through Disney or different companies or anything like that, everyone always says you want to ask follow-up questions. I think because after seeing it like on an interview committee, I've seen how like if you don't ask any follow-up questions, it just looks very passive. It doesn't look very engaging. It looks very like, oh no, I'm good. Like that's okay. Like it doesn't show interest. Even if you just have one question, having any question is really good. My go-to question, you guys can totally steal this and use this. My go-to question is asking the person like, what do you love most about your job? What do you love most about working for this company? What's a fun day like for you? Getting the person to talk about themselves kind of lessens the pressure on you and makes it more of a conversation rather than like an interview, you know? And there's also studies too that people love talking about themselves. So if you can ask them questions and get them talking about themselves, you want the interview interviewer to be obviously enjoying the conversation and lead the conversation with positive feelings towards you because you want them to hire you. So um, what I do is I just try to get the person talking about themselves or talking about something that they really enjoy. So that's my go-to question. Some other questions you could probably Google. I'm sure there's tons of articles out there on really good questions to ask someone after an interview. I think even if you ask one, that is way better than just saying like, no, I don't have any additional questions. Um, and you can totally use the one I said, but yes, you definitely want to have questions to ask them after they're done interviewing you. Some interview questions they might ask you specifically for um, the program itself. They might ask you about like living situations, like how you do living with roommates, um, how you do working on a team, like which program you want to do, like if you have a preference between Florida and California, which one you would want to do. So they might ask you specific questions about the program in general. So make sure you have a good idea of what you want. I think it's probably better to have a good set answer for those as opposed to like 
no, like I'm fine either way. And it does show that you are open-minded to things, but it also comes across as passive. So if you really do have a preference, like figure that out beforehand. I'm trying to think of other questions they might ask. It's been, again, three years, so I don't remember the exact questions. I kind of wish I wrote it down at this point. But for me, I know that they asked me very specific questions about my like roles I was really interested in. That's the one part that stands out in my mind. Those are just kind of things that they might ask you. Again, I could be totally off. It's been three years. I would just think about the questions that you were asked in your application and see if, because that's that's kind of what they did, was they drew from questions. They were looking at my application and they were asking me questions off my application. So when you're doing your application, keep those questions in mind and really know your response to them in case you are asked more detailed questions regarding your responses. And lastly, I hope all of you guys know this, but be sure to thank the person for their time. They're taking time out of their day to interview you, and they're interviewing a ton of different people. I was looking online at the statistics, and there is around 4,000 participants at in the program at any given time. I think for the year that I applied, there was like... They told the statistic like the very first day of like move in at my dorm place. Um, but I think that, like there was like 16,000 or 20,000 people that had applied for 4,000 positions. So honestly, you want to do whatever you can to stand out because you are competing against other people. It's not just like, oh, I was one of the first people to apply. I'm a shoe in I'll get the exact role I want. Like you really have to try for this because there are so many different people that are applying. There are people who have applied like years in a row. So this is a very competitive process and I don't want it to seem like it's not because it actually is. And you want to do things that make you stand out. So sounding engaged, saying thank you, asking questions at the end. These are all just tips to make you stand apart from other people and really show that you want to be a part of the Disney College program. And that is it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative and beneficial and you got some more ideas of ways to prepare for your interview. If you guys had a question that I didn't really cover in this video, please leave it down in the comment section down below. That way I can answer it. And I'm sure if you have a question, there are other people that probably have the same question and that would benefit them too. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope your interviews all go really, really well fingers crossed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!